welcome everyone to the cell feeling test uh, the holy grail of test automation or just a lot of ado about nothing by mathias zax now without further delay over to you mathias thank you very much thank you much for the kind introduction and yeah thank you for having me here at agile india it's a pleasure and the honor to be here um today i want to talk a little bit about self healing tests yeah and self healing test this is a topic which is has a lot to do with these buzzwords like um machine learning artificial intelligence um test automation and these buzzwords yeah are more or less now present in each and every it company so this is kind of a, a really hot topic and I call myself an engineer and as an engineer I always try to search for new solutions so you could say I'm searching for the holy grail and I don't know if you know the movie Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade um if not they're also searching for a holy grail and there are a lot of stumbling stones to come there so quite tricky um to get to the holy grail and also if you're there yeah and you see it and it's so beautiful this doesn't mean that it's really valuable for you or that it, that, that it works and if self healing test is the holy grail for test automation or just a lot about noise about nothing yeah uh, this uh, i will clarify today um but first let me introduce myself a little bit that you know who is speaking um yeah i'm matthias tax i am from austria so i'm living in vienna and i am working for rbi so rapids bank international there as an agile engineering coach this is not to do um a lot with scrum or kanban it's more about uh, the mature level of software development what we are training because with an agile transformation we saw that we also have to increase uh, or, or just work different with different technologies and i personally focus myself in test automation I am furthermore the organizer for the community of practice for test automation which is an internal community where we foster test automation topics as you see it's kind of my 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 passion and i was come as a developer by heart because this is kind of what i am and now switched a little bit into the test automation area furthermore i want to share what we are doing yeah, on conferences so that also you can benefit from that and also that we get feedback that we see if you're on the right track and doing um uh, cool things yeah and i also contribute to the paperwork so i'm author for it magazines uh, which is also a nice experience for myself yeah if you want to get in contact with me please use the contact data preferably on linkedin um it's always nice to to share and see and contribute good back to our great topic self healing test yeah so let me give you a little bit agenda or the storyline what how i structured the talk is about first i want to give you a motivation why i focused on this topic yeah why i have even investigated on it then i will share some numbers so during my research i found some cool numbers um which fostered also my my decision and i want to share those of course of course and then i will tell you what's the problem what's the solution and what's my product i have chosen to um tackle the, the problem and then we have q and a Uh, we have enough time for that because this is important for me that we also that you have the possibility to to ask yeah. good motivation what motivated me why i have even investigated into the topic first i want to make a statement this is software or test automation is software development hopefully everyone is in this opinion if not we can definitely have a great discussion afterwards in the q and a but for now test automation is software development this means it needs to be sustainable it needs to be maintained it needs to be refactored um it needs to get the same attention as business related code yeah this is very important and maintenance especially um maybe you know or know or that this is yeah expensive uh sometimes disgusting annoying <laughs> and of course i want to decrease this maintenance effort and if you get the test reports yeah from the test execution from the test uh, automation from the pipeline maybe and you have then you have some failing tests and you have to do then root cause analyzing yeah and this is very time consuming and especially if you have then some patterns yeah you see for example uh, a locator change in something like this then this is really annoying yeah and i was like come on there has to be a solution outside or why i have to do things same uh repeat myself yeah and uh, because i'm really uh automate practitioner something like this yes i really want to automate things where i see i have to, i repeat it and so i started to research and here i found some numbers some uh, quite 
uh, well-known companies like Gartner and uh, also Telerik. Telerik is a company they did a uh, research on test automation back best practices and also maintenance and they published some numbers and the first number i found which was I guess maybe the most important one it's quite big 73.5 percent of all failing tests are cost of bright locators or a bad locator strategy yeah and this is a very huge number with a huge potential because this is exactly where self-healing tests um, is, is we are working against it and i definitely want to decrease this number yeah the next two numbers are more related to automation. The first is 40%, and here we talk about, uh, this is kind of a trend in 2023, 40% of all teams or IT teams will use some um, machine learning or even AI algorithms to get more uh, agility, uh, to, to uh, achieve more agility and scalability. Yeah? So this is kind of a trend where we see a lot of things will get automated and also some tooling will uh, support us here. The next number is even much higher. It's 90%, and this is really uh, interesting. Um, this is from Gartner. They say that 90% uh, of all IT companies will have a dedicated job role called IT architect. Ah, IT architect. Yeah, this, that's already <laughs> automation architect or automation engineer, something like this. And then you have a reference number. Today, it's about 20%. Yeah? So this is a poof. Uh, a big trend there and my topic with self healing test is really in the automation part of course uh, and test automation Gartner went even further this is quite interesting they invented a new term called hyper automation what is hyper automation in my words hyper automation is the orchestration for the automation yeah so it's kind of you have an uh, effective combination of a complementary set of tools to so at the end to achieve uh, or to scale your automation yeah, with tactical and also strategic goals. So it's kind of you orchestrate your automation yeah, because you have quite a lot of um, automation tools in place. And at some point in time, you have to orchestrate it. And I did a Google trend research on that and you see some peaks in the past. Don't ask me what that this is. But since 2019, you see that there is a trend ongoing. Uh, people are, are searching for that. So this is, um, you see hyper automation is trendy. And self-healing test is um, has to do with, with hyper automation. So this is what we motivated me. So I wanted to decrease maintenance effort. And um, during the research, I saw that, OK, this is a, a hot topic. So there must be a solution. But before I come to the solution, I want to share the problem. And look at this picture. Look how old I look at that picture. No, just kidding. That's not me. But maybe I look like that um, if I again, doing root cause analysis, and I find the exception with no such element. Yeah. So the problem, what I'm tackling today is the no such element exception. What is this no such element exception? Yeah, maybe you know it, but still I want to explain it. Uh, it's a common exception in, in GUI testing. Yeah. For example, if you use Selenium and um, the, your automation scripts are not able to to get the element on the website so it's not visible or it's um, you have some latency problems or yeah the locator changed and you know i mean application changes after each release more or less yeah and in days where we release very very fast the application continuously changes and people change yeah and they can if you get new people into the team and you maybe have don't have very good common agreements or even that you kind of force it <laughs> then they can change locators, they can invent new naming conventions. And if you have a very mature DevOps team, you can, of course, predict a lot yeah, that in the communication. But you know sometimes the communi communication between testers and, and developers is not that well, or even you use uh, external software components like you have in your website, um, um, I don't know, Facebook like buttons and something like this or other plugins. Uh, those locators you don't have in your control. And if they change, of course, um, you have to do something. Yeah. So this is exactly the problem. And for that, I searched for the solution. And the solution is, of course, I spoiled it already <laughs> on, my, on my title. Yeah. It's self-healing. Yeah. So self-healing tests. What is self-healing? What 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 do I talk here? Yeah. And overall, you can say that self-healing is the automation for the test automation yeah so self-healing there is um, running a process 
in your in your on your server or in your test automation, and it um, fetches data, yeah, or it grabs data. So additional data yeah, about the system, about the objects, about um, your website, and stores it. And based on this data, it will learn. So this also means how more often you execute and run the stuff, the more that data gets produced and the better the learning algorithms uh, can work and can then deliver you then solutions or, or self-healed uh, self uh, locators in, in, in my area now. And at the end, it's kind of a key to build an efficient test automation and test automation maintenance process. Yeah, so this is very, very important. And this is, sounds really cool. So, you know, the, the problem now and the, the solution. And then I started, of course, researching about tools. Yeah? And as you all know, nowadays it's 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 a mess, yeah? a tool mess outside. Um, if you search for something, you get so many tools and, and somehow it's it's really difficult to choose one. And so there are so, so several commercial tools like uh, from Marble, Test IM, or Crescentis. There's, of course, no product pitch here. Um, it's just that you hear some numbers, uh, some numbers, some companies. And I, as I call myself developer by heart, like really like open source stuff. And I found one. Yeah, And this is called Helium. It's open source. And yeah, you can see here the GitHub link. Um, everything is published. And yeah, this is really cool. And what is Helium? Well, let me explain it. Helium is open source, as already mentioned, and it's based on Selenium and Java. Yeah, so this is kind of also a precondition if you want to use it. And it's a real-time engine. What do I mean with that? This is really cool. It it runs with your test execution, so nothing has to be installed on any um, server or something like this. The integration is done. Uh, in the on the test, test automation suite, so it runs with it. It's a library, and it of course it needs some infrastructure based on uh, behind. I will explain you afterwards. It has this machine learning algorithm in place, so it it consumes tons of data kind of and um, learns. Yeah, I have not investigated how the algorithm is designed. I also don't care to be honest. It has it in place. And for the developers, which is quite cool, they have an IntelliJ IDEA plugin, uh, which is also easier than for the maintenance if if some healing is ongoing, that you see the results and then you can uh, use them. The integration, how is the, the integration done? It's really easy. As I mentioned, nothing has to be installed on, on the server, also on the test execution servers. The integration is done on the locators. So if you use locators like find by or or by yeah? that's a, i guess the mostly common use locators um, then you can use selenium because the integration is done a uh, level higher so it's done on the web driver and you can see it here so in general you have here your web driver your chrome driver you also use a chrome and then based on that you can create the self-healing driver and then this driver you can use then afterwards for your locators yeah so this is how the integration is done of course you need some configuration files and so on where you uh, tell the uh, Helenium where the backend servers are and so on, but these are yeah details. This is just what you have to prepare, and as I mentioned, this property file. So this is what Helenium is about. Now I want to explain you also how Helenium is designed from the components that it's really transparent because um, yeah for me it took I don't know one or two hours to install everything. It was really cool, yeah. So what is Selenium? Uh, how is Selenium the components are? First, everything starts with test automation code. If you don't have that test automation code, you should maybe um, investigate that and invest in test automation. It pays off. Here, you have to integrate it with your Helenium client. So it's kind of the Helenium jar. Yeah? So this is what you have to do. Then you have more or less everything done from this integration perspective. And what you have to, of course, install is a Helenium backend. This is a REST for web service. And it yeah, you can install it by your own or they have a Docker support. So you can run it inside a Docker, which is very convenient. So you just have to yeah, pull the Docker image and run it. Um, 
And of course, it needs a database. So this is kind of the Helenium Postgres database. See, everything is here um, also free. And this is also um, yeah, delivered by a Docker image. So nothing um, intensive to configure. And for those who are really lazy, like me, <laughs> they also uh, support or, or deliver a Docker Compose file. So you just have to download this um, YAML file and, and, and start it. And both of these Docker images get started. And you can interact with it through the, the rest for web service. So this is, from that perspective, two things are missing. On the one side, as I mentioned, the IntelliJ ID plugin. Yeah, this, of course, you can download from the marketplace. It's integrated with the automation code. Yes, of course. And with the uh, REST for web service. So this is from that perspective, but that's optional. And also for the reporting, they have a, a Gradle and a Maven plugin because they need to tell the backend when a new test execution uh, is done or, or triggered that they can deliver a better report. But also that is uh, optional. They don't have to use it. And yeah, so that's the components more or less. As I mentioned, everything very easy, straightforward, and um, yeah, easy to use. Good, as next point, I want to, and this is now kind of the most exciting one, I prepared an example, yeah, that you really see where is Helenium working, how it, uh, what did you get, and so on. And here I prepared uh, the example of Again, with an open source project. Yeah, I guess you see a pattern. And this is a Digibank, it's a digital bank app, also um, on GitHub. And yeah, I just uh, prepared here a test case for, for the login. Good, so as I mentioned, this is our Digibank running. Um, yeah, it's a website. You can see here our test automation framework. You can see here, um, this is the Helium backend. Yeah, so very sophisticated now here. <laughs> And um, this is defined by a locator. So you can see here, this is now with the password. And you can see here kind of the snippet of the HTML. You can see, oh yeah, that's the input that the ID is password. Yeah. So everything is fine. Good. Now, you know, we have a pipeline. Tests are uh, always executed. So it gets triggered. What the, the test um, automation framework tries to find the element. And it yeah, has found the element. Cool. Everything is nice. But this status, um, quite difficult to read maybe, uh, this successful found um, gets also um, transported to the Helenium jar. And this gets also then forwarded to the Helenium backend. There it stores the, all the additional data. Yeah? So nice. Cool. So in your um, um, test execution, you see a green, uh, a green sign. Everything is fine. Good. Now, new version. A new version comes that's um, yeah usual and yeah they implemented new naming conventions if this is now realistic or not um, we don't care but they a new naming convention for the attribute id they also add now the uh, html time so password gets password input okay good they of course deploy everything um, and the test get executed it tries to find the element yeah and of course what happens now hmm? Bam! Exactly. Ex uh, no such element exception. But this is now in the logs. Yeah? So th you don't get that because Helenium is in place. And this status element not found or no such element gets forwarded again to the Helenium client. This gets forwarded to the backend. And there then the algorithm starts working and it delivers new locators. Yeah? And these locators get then forwarded again to the test execution. And it tries to refine the element. Yeah, you also can define uh, refined counters and so on, how often you should try it. And it found the element. Awesome. But why? What's in the logs? Yeah? And if you go inside, you can see that it, uh, first it, in the red box, it uh, um, first used the password one. Yeah? So it, this then it tries to heal. And you see it's used the healed locator now with a score of 79 something. I don't know what that is. Yeah, maybe this is the algorithm, yeah. And it used uh, the CSS selector input password. Yeah, so with ID again. So that's very interesting. So it doesn't only take historical data, it also takes the data from the current run, uh, which is really nice. And of course, an ID has a very high value. Uh, if I would remove the ID now, it would probably take the name, yeah. 
or I don't know, yeah, <laughs> most probably. And this is really cool. Yeah. So also if a locator changes, it tries to take the new one. And yeah, the oops, sorry. And the test is green. Yeah. So you don't see it. The test is green. You just in the report you would see that it healed it. Yeah. But from the execution perspective, everything is fine. Good. Awesome. Two things are missing, as I already mentioned, report and the, again, the uh, ID plugin. First, the report. The report is available um, also from, from this uh, REST for web server, but here you get delivered a, a GUI. And from each execution, you get then the HILT report. And you can see here very nicely uh, what was the failed locator. So you can see um, the password and the ID. And then also the healed one and a nice picture next to it. And also kind of a toggle where you can see if it's successful or not. I guess this is then that the algorithm learns from it a little bit better that yours can tell it um, that it didn't work. Uh, but I have not tested that one. Um, yes, cool. From a recommendation from my perspective that this report is a little bit, it's nice, but I would integrate it into your current reporting, whatever you're using, um, maybe to also implement a new status. Yeah? Because um, in general, you have the green ones and the red ones, yeah? so the successful tests and then the, the failed ones. And I highly recommend to implement the search status kind of orange one where it's kind of the heat locators. Yeah? You can get this data out of this um, um, server and um, that you see it, yeah, because it's quite nice to have this, really, um, but also it's very nice to use it um, for a discussion with the developers that is telling, hey, guys, or in the, in the next grooming or in the uh, retro or wherever you want, yeah, um, that, hey, guys, why we have 10 uh, healed locators, yeah, why have changed them, yeah, because, of course, you want to, you want to um, use it, yeah, also not only for the healing, but also as a, as a discussion um, basement. And how does the IntelliJ uh, plugin look like? This is like this. So you have here your source code and you can do a right click on the locators. You have then healing uh, results um, in the context menu. And if you click there, you have then all uh, locators um, healed ones from that. So you can see here the second one is this ID uh, password input with the score 79 um, and the other one is I, I don't know that one to be honest uh, yeah good so self-healing what is self-healing self-healing is the automation for the test automation hmm. self-healing saves time in maintenance uh, of the automation script self-healing source definitely the no such element exception and self-healing with open source means selenium um, and if you ask me now is self-healing nowadays holy grail for test automation hmm. difficult question yeah i would say yeah yeah it's the right way i really like i mean you see that automation hype automation there it's it's a high trend yeah? it's a hot topic and with helenium you you don't have a, a huge border to get into that yeah it's open source you you can re really fast start it of course if you're using java and selenium and you can use it to get first experiences in this area yeah i really like it it it's maybe not the holy grail yeah <laughs> but uh, it's definitely a, one of the right steps into the right direction I really enjoyed it. It was a very nice experience for my side. I learned a lot. And yeah, that's what I can say to that. Thank you very much now for your attention. Hopefully it was interesting. Hopefully it was um, expiring for you. And now you have time for questions. Good, there's one question. Uh, what if Helenium backend provided input conflict with another input field? Does Selenium backend database prepared or is it provided just jumper words? Uh, okay, so the first question for um, conflict with another input field, um, I have never uh, experienced that one, to be honest. Um, all of my healings were always properly done. Uh, but I also have to say, we don't have it now running uh, one of our production products. It was a PUC. Uh, which we have um, done and we tested, I don't know, yeah, we took a lot of tests and all of them were really good. Yeah, but of course, some of them, there was no healing and 
Um, but for those where a healing was possible, it really worked and there were no conflicts with others. I guess this, based on the data, the conflict is really rarely. But in theory, if I think about it, could be possible. But as I mentioned, up to now, there was nothing. And the second one, does Selenium backend database prepared or it's just jumble words? Um, who I really don't know exactly the question. I mean, the, the database is in Postgres in the Helium, it's in Docker, it's everything is really nice. You can also query it if you want to do your own um, uh, researches. So this is really um, easy to use and, but I have not investigated, I just used it, yeah. Another question from Edina. Hello, Matthias. My question, is there any security aspect into this to be aware of? <clears throat> In my opinion, not. Yeah, the, I mean, the data which is uh, uh, saved uh, so the server is in your responsibility. It's it's not somewhere in the cloud. I mean, you can, of course, start in the cloud. It's a Docker container. You can run it wherever you want to. So about this data, um, you have to care about, of course, yeah, if you store it somewhere. But it's only about locators. So you don't store any any data of the website itself. It's just about uh, the HTML. Yeah? And so I don't see any security issues here. The next question, does Helenium backend data? Ah, sorry, that one we had already. Ah, um, means do we need to prepare a database? Ah, okay. Um, no, you don't need to prepare a database. Everything is, is done in this Docker image. Yeah? So everything is set up, the database is initialized or the tables are created or permissions are set, uh, the database user, everything is done for you. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. What I did, I downloaded really the Docker Compose YAML file um, and I just did Docker Compose run or up, who has to come out now. <laughs> and it's it provided me more or less um, an, um, an open port, yeah, which is both the rest of web server and it worked. So this is really, really easy. I really enjoyed that one. Uh, another question. Do we have any self-healing test tool for unit test or cucumber test? Just curious to know. I really don't know. Sorry for that. Um, I really focused here on on this on the selenium one. Um, I also don't know how it could heal there. You know, because which kind of tests? I mean, if they're UI tests, yes. But on unit test level, you probably don't test the UI. Hopefully. And yeah, Cucumber, it's just BDD, yeah. So sorry. Um, another question. So self-healing here is finding the missing element, right? So self-healing here is finding the missing element. Yeah, kind of the, the changed element, yes. I mean, this is, you know, um, <laughs> I already get quite a nice feedback about, about um, this talk where it also was like this self healing could be used to optimize the locators or and it's like yeah in theory yes yeah. so it's it's also that i mean in one side the application change yeah and it cannot find the element and it tries to um, find it differently yeah but if you have for example a very very complex ele um, element and uh, because of a latency it cannot find the element yeah so it, it just it takes too long and it, the algorithm is activated it tries to refind it with a uh, locator which is provided from Helenium and then it in theory could optimize <laughs> your locators so um, the tool itself has quite a, a potential and it's of course in in a very early stage um, there's quite a lot of ongoing if you check the github project there's uh, quite a lot of contribution and yeah maybe to mention it's also available for for um, for APU so you can also use it for your mobile app testing. Uh, this I totally forgot to mention, sorry for that. Uh, so this is, you see it's, there is, um, the tool is evolving, yeah. But at the end, uh, self-healing um, kind of tries to um, find the missing or the changed element, yeah. Thank you very much everyone for joining this session today. Yep, thank you very much.